or as we wrap, well, we're not wrapping up the day yet, but as we get closer, because I think it's going to call back to a lot of different things that we've heard in previous talks in track two today for others that were in here. Um, one of the things that I particularly like this is in the advisory board and the chairs, when we do a review of all the submissions, we do a blind review and we get pretty far into it before we get to see who the sub submissions are from. But whenever you see a submission and it's from, you know, an enterprise that's doing kind of use case stuff, everyone's like instantly excited. So uh, really, really excited and pleased that Capital One team can come and, and talk. So John, Bob, if you guys want to take it away. Great. Thanks, Rick. Um, my so, name is Bob you. McLean. I lead the cyber threat intelligence team at Capital One, and I'm joined today by John Gerardo. Uh, John is a cyber threat landscape analyst on our CTI team, and he's also a key architect of our uh, custom internal built uh, Intel platform that we're going to call Atlas for the purpose of this presentation. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, challenges facing a CTI program uh, in a large corporate environment and how those challenges are exacerbated if it's not grounded in a mature uh, intelligence requirements uh, program from a collection cell. And then what we're going to do is dive into uh, some of the ways that you can take intelligence requirements from the ground up and build it into a really uh, mature uh, process for uh, both your Intel program and your entire enterprise. Um, and then what we're going to do is talk about how that drives operations, how it drives in, uh, Intel driven operations and how that feeds into uh, the need to disseminate your information in a, in a platform that can reach your customers, expand your base. Um, John is going to talk about our Atlas platform, uh, some of the creative solutions that we've come up with there to make it an interactive platform as well as um, a, a product repository, and then serve as a force multiplier. And, and this is really key as well. Um, as we disseminate information, track requirements addressed through Atlas, uh, we're also able to collect metrics there, both from a production standpoint, but from a uh, threat uh, tracking standpoint. Um, so that gives us and our stakeholders throughout the business a lot of visibility, not only from the um, the narrative agenda of our of our products, but also the empirical data. So the key takeaways from today's uh, briefing is intelligence requirements can work in a large corporate environment if we apply lessons learned and best practices from both the public and private sector. And that's what we've been doing at Capital One. Uh, second, with those intelligence requirements, you're going to help uh, you're going to help your customers fully identify their information needs, their gaps, and also help them drive operations via intelligence that you're supplying them. We need to have a way to get that information out to our customers. We need to do that in an efficient manner. There's many challenges to doing that in a large enterprise. Um, so we're going to dive deeply into our custom built uh, solution and uh, explain how you can make that work in your own environment if you don't have something like that. And then finally, we encourage you to reach out to us after the presentation, um, whether you've explored uh, building your own internal Intel uh, platform or whether uh, it's something uh, you, you haven't really thought about yet until today, we can help you uh, provide ideas, what works, what the challenges are, and we love to have those conversations. Uh, so with that, John, let's go ahead and get started. So beginning with challenges of intelligence in the private sector, um, a CTI team in a large corporate environment, such as Capital One, is dealing with global threats, right? We deal with threats from all over the globe with uh, threat actors from various levels of sophistication, resources, various motivations. Um, and there, there's no limitation, uh, whether it's regional, or, uh, or uh, motivational of what sort of adversary uh, may seek to target financial institutions in the United States. Um, as such, we have a broad scope uh, for, uh, for evaluating the cyber threat landscape. This requires what we call all source intelligence in the private sector. Um, so we classify those into five main categories. The first three we consider closed source so that's your intelligence vendors, 
uh, it's your information sharing communities, and uh, it's your internal information and data. Those all have to be key parts of, the, of your collection. Then there's the open source, the security company, free reporting, the media reports, um, that all has to feed into your collection. And then finally, there's the hybrid of, of government reporting, which, which can be either closed source or, or fully open source. So this all leads to extensive collection, processing, analysis, production, and, disseminates, and dissemination. But how are you going to disseminate it? And who are your customers? So John, if we go to the next slide, the other, the other challenge we have in a large uh, corporate environment is the customer base. You're dealing with a very large and diverse customer base. Um, this may be your cyber leadership team, or maybe your cyber operators who may be interested in very different information or at information at very different levels, right? Uh, you have your lines of business, you have your board of directors, you have perhaps enterprise teams um, who are working to defend uh, the business um, in, in, different, in different manners or develop applications. Um, so you've got a broad set of customers, you've got a broad threat you have to cover. There, there are other obstacles as well. Um, most of your customers do not have a background in the intelligence community. Most of your customers do not have a background in cyber threat analysis. Um, many of your customers may struggle to identify what their information needs are, how intelligence can help them, and how they can take intelligence and make it actionable. Finally, your, your customers may want that information in various different formats, um, long papers, short papers, briefings, uh, whatever it may be. Um, so if you're a, a CTI program that's adapting to a broad audience and a broad threat, you need to have a plan. So let's go to the next slide, John. You have to establish yourself and CTI's role within the enterprise. Um, to do that, you got to set the agenda. So a immature CTI team can be reactionary. Reactionary is where you are driven by external events um, or by internal requests for information from various stakeholders. As an alternative, um, we recommend the, the uh, approach of being uh, deliberate, strategic, and that means proactive. Proactive by having established intelligence requirements and being initiative driven. We're not gonna talk about all of our initiatives today, um, but we are gonna talk a lot about our Intel requirements and uh, one of our key initiatives, which has been our Intel platform. So Intel requirements. Um, Intel requirements are critical for the purpose of that they enable you to scope your collections and scope your production to the information needs of your business. Um, to do that, you have to identify what your mission is, um, who your customers are, who are your potential customers. Uh, those are the first key questions that you have to ask to know where you need to take your Intel requirements. Um, then you got to take a look at developing your Intel requirements from various phases. And we're going to get into those specific phases as we go through the next few slides here. Um, but the other key part of building out your role in the enterprise is building your platform. Um, you need to be able to serve your customers, you need to be able to establish your brand, and you need to be able to expand your customer base. And building that platform, uh, such as we have with Atlas at Capital One, is going to help you um, establish that brand, establish your role in the enterprise, and most critically, establish trust of your customers and establish a way to drive, again, drive operations through intelligence. Next slide. So let's dive into intelligence requirements. What you can expect when getting started are, are four key challenges here. And uh, the first is limited resources. Most teams do not necessarily have uh, dedicated collection managers. Getting Intel requirements right um, requires resources. It takes time. It takes personnel. Um, not a lot of personnel, but you need some dedicated personnel who are collections managers um, who can put in the time engaging with customers to get this right. Um, wh why do we need to engage customers? We need to engage them because you will inevitably, inevitably face questions on relevancy. 
um, your customers may not know that, that they are your customers or that they are potential customers. Um, they may lack experience with Intel requirements. You will certainly come across uh, teams full of people who have no experience with intelligence requirements. Um, and if they don't have that experience, they, don't, they may not understand the relevancy. They may not provide the feedback we need to identify their information needs and to contribute to the intelligence requirements. This then creates another problem. You may, if you don't have uh, full contributions from your uh, customers, you've got to get inconsistent contributions. And what that's got to lead to is distortions within your intelligence requirements list. Um, those distortions will, um, will focus heavily on those customers who engage you, who provide that feedback. And then that is going to alter the way that you operate as a program if you don't understand that and work with the customers. Uh, and I'm going to use the term a couple of times here uh, throughout the brief, but handhold those customers um, who don't necessarily understand the process, who have trouble understanding what their information needs are and how to articulate them. Um, that's, that's not a uh, criticism of those customers. It's, it's just a fact because again, we are the intelligence professionals. We need to help our customers understand how to articulate that so that we can go out and collect against that information and report on it. Finally, um, avoid creating problems for yourself by, um, by developing uh, opportunities for collections gaps when you review them down the road. And what I mean by that is that if you're just kicking off a, uh, your intelligence requirements process and you're just building out a, a collections function, you, you wanna make sure you're constantly providing feedback to those you're engaging with. Because if you are so eager for that feedback that you accept uh, Intel requirement nominations without um, looking at those critically and, and helping the customers understand what is realistic from a collections perspective, what will really provide value to those teams, you'll find yourself reviewing your performance against the Intel requirements six months later, a month later, whenever it may be, and see that you have many gaps because some of your Intel requirements were not realistic or they may not really add any sort of value because it's not the sort of information that's appropriate for an intelligence requirement. Next slide. So some required actions for success. Um, start by building out an intelligence requirements baseline. Um, what I mean by this is if you're on a CTI team or you're responsible for developing intelligence requirements in your environment, there's a reason. You have some sort of knowledge of the cyber threat landscape. Um, you work with others on your team in CTI or others in Intel who have knowledge of the cyber threat landscape. Start by building a foundation of what you see as requirements for the program based on your knowledge of the, of the threat landscape. Do not stop there, of course. Um, we need to get the inputs from all of our stakeholders. Otherwise we risk um, not only not reflecting the information needs of our customers, um, but we, we risk accentuating our built-in assumptions, our built-in biases, and therefore we collect against those threats that we think are the greatest problem. But then when we talk to the business, we realize we've left ourselves with clear gaps. Um, so build the baseline. The baseline will get you started. And it'll also serve as an example when you go out and engage your customers to show um, a little bit of structure and also um, actual Intel requirements, what they look like and how we can add to the picture. Um, next, you need to identify your customers. Uh, this is a key part, um, but once you do identify them, you've got to promote this process. You've got to explain why it matters and schedule meetings with all of your stakeholders. And the tip here is know your audience. You might have to explain it a little bit differently to different audiences, what it means for them. Um, so make sure you reach out, make sure you put in the work to explain the process. We at Capital One have developed a uh, internal training program that's available enterprise-wide um, and is required throughout parts of the business. Um, so that our customers are coming into these meetings, even if they um, have experience or don't have experience going through this 
biannual review process with us that they'll at least have a baseline of understanding what it's about. Um, so you schedule your meetings, you hold your meetings with various teams of, of stakeholders throughout the business. Again, I'll use the term handhold. Make sure you handhold where necessary. Don't just accept, um, we don't really have any information requirements. Uh, we can't think of any, help them do it. That's, that's, what, that's what we have to put a lot of effort into is helping our customers understand what those needs are and how we can formulate them into Intel requirements that we can then collect on. Um, once that process is done, you're gonna be refining your standing intelligence requirements, the language that has been submitted by your customers, providing them subject, suggested language back and uh, finalizing that language. Um, at Capital One, we use standing Intel requirements and then about 25% of those are priority intelligence requirements. Um, priority intelligence requirements um, also go under our review process twice a year. Um, and the way we develop those are based on um, either customer nominations <clears throat> specifically to be a priority intelligence requirement um, or where there's commonality between a lot of customers uh, in a specific standing intelligence requirement. Once you finalize those lists, um, you finalize your production requirements. Production requirements are based on a, a linked series of Intel requirements that address a production need. Um, at that point, you've completed the process. You're gonna disseminate it to your customers. Um, we disseminate it in two ways. We disseminate it out via email, but we also hang it on our Atlas platform where it stays and our customers can see it at any point um, and, and can see performance addressing those requirements. Um, and you've got to operationalize them once you've disseminated it. Then comes the collection. Um, collection can come in various formats. It can come in automated collection uh, that you set up, manual collection or task collection. Uh, during this process, you're gonna, you have to document uh, when you're addressing those Intel requirements. Diversify your product lines. Uh, as we talked about earlier, you have many types of customers and you collect uh, a lot of different types of information. Some of it is higher level, um, wider ranging interest is likely throughout the business. Some of it is very specific to Intel requirements that are more at a tactical level. We have reports that are designed to address those various audiences so that we can still um, put out reporting addressing Intel requirements when it's not necessarily something that needs to go out to our wider customer base in a blast distro. Um, SIR additions, remember this is not a static list. So at any point throughout the year, customers should be able to, um, to submit requests for new Intel requirements, new standing Intel requirements, new priority Intel requirements, or even your Intel program itself may come up with new requirements based on evolutions in the cyber threat landscape. We've done that uh, where we as a program determine, hey, look, you know, we need these nine additional Intel requirements based on uh, developments in the last couple months here. Um, we're adding them now. And you don't need to wait till your biannual review or whatever period you choose. We, we've chosen a biannual review um, because um, Things don't move that quickly that, that quarterly is necessary. As we talked about, um, there's a lot of work that goes into the review process, um, but annual seems to be too long in our view. We wanna make sure that our uh, requirements stay comprehensive and up to date. So we go with a biannual review process. And then as you see uh, on, on this chart here, the process starts over again. It, it's a continuous cycle where you're, you're starting a biannual review engaging the customers and going through the whole process again. Next slide, John. All right, so I wanna talk about a, a few quick points on the stakeholder engagement and, and uh, the amendment process of the Intel requirements. Um, as you're meeting with your stakeholders, um, one of the things that we've developed in Capital One is, is we do follow the RACI model. So that's the responsible, accountable, consulted and informed when it comes to our biannual review of the Intel requirements. This ensures that we have a uh, deliberate structure and uh, a, a, a line of responsibility that, that flows throughout 
both our Intel program and our stakeholders to ensure that it's a repeatable process and that is performed right each time around. Um, secondly, um, SIRs need to be uh, crafted in a collaborative manner. We talked a little bit about this, but um, we need them to accurately reflect the needs of the customers, but we also need to make sure that these are actionable, right? That these are uh, Intel requirements that, that we have um, collection assets to address. Um, moving over to the amendment process, once we have all that information in, a few other points we wanna stress here is uh, you wanna review your performance for the prior six months. Um, so you will not hit all of your Intel requirements. Do not expect to hit 100% of your Intel requirements. Um, if you hit 100% of your Intel requirements, you may not have comprehensive enough coverage. Um, so what we do is we look at where did we not hit? Why did we not hit it? Is it stale? Is it unnecessary? Or is it somewhere where we need to adjust um, our collections planning to address those Intel requirements in the next six months? Um, and, and secondly, uh, you wanna look at your um, requirements list Look at your PIRs. Again, work your PIRs based on a nomination process from your customers, but also looking at the totality of interest from your customers and what Intel requirements really resonate throughout the business or across a number of teams that might be able to action it and elevate those to priority Intel requirements. Um, and then finally, um, you can use your Intel requirements if your reporting is formulated this way to help evaluate your intelligence sources. Um, so in other words, if you're documenting uh, which intelligence source contributed to a certain report, served as the source for a report, that can serve as, as one of many different pieces of information to inform evaluations of your sources. Next slide. All right, finally, I wanna talk about how this leads to Intel-driven operations, and then I'm gonna turn it over to John. Um, so a efficient um, and lean program can be highly productive and impactful if grounded in intelligence requirements. And what we want to show here is that um, with, a, with that productive, efficient Intel program, you can drive a lot of uh, actionable outputs um, based on your uh, based on your Intel requirements. If you look at our actionable outputs here, those range from day-to-day -day sort of operations to uh, informing your detection and alerting prioritization, red team, hunt team operations, um, as well as mapping uh, your adversaries to things like the MITRE attack framework, understanding uh, what uh, tactics and techniques they use and how well you're defended against those, all the way up to internal controls contracts, partnerships, and acquisitions, as well as uh, strategic prioritizations for the business itself. Um, and then product outputs, to be productive from a production standpoint, um, you're gonna have to have a lot of products. We have a lot of products to address the various um, objectives of the program, all the way down from uh, metrics insights on our Atlas platform that John will dive into, uh, into um, tactical reports, to reports highlighting um, emerging threats all the way up to our, our cyber threat landscape, strategic product, board memo uh, products. So Intel requirements drive all of that actionable output, all that production in a strategic manner, a deliberate manner, and enables, again, a relatively small intelligence program to have a large impact when it comes to actionable outputs and products for your customers, informing them, providing them with the context they need. I'm gonna turn it over to John now so he can go into our Atlas platform and how that enhances those deliverables. Thanks, Bob. So before I get into, uh, and Bob did a great job in kind of walking through our Intel requirements and why they're important for your program, right? There is in the maturity of your program and how we collect against our requirements and kind of the cycle. So we started off talking about the cycle. Now we're going to talk about operationalizing those requirements and how can you build towards a platform for your organization 
or for yourself even if you're just that curious. So before we get deep into that, let's let's think about the challenges first. And, and the way I, I like to think about these challenges is that there's really two parts, right? There's satisfying those, those stakeholders or satisfying those requirements rather. And that's kind of a dissemination issue. And then satisfying the requirement itself and managing those requirements, right? So we talk about the Biana review. We talked about all those things that uh, help you develop the, the requirements. Now we'll, we'll get into how you operationalize it. So we'll start with dissemination. Now, when we first start off in, in, in Intel, especially if you're a newer team, most of your Intel is driven from the inbox, right? All your products or the way you disseminate products that address those requirements may come to you, your stakeholders or who your readers are via email. And email is, is limited because one, it's, it's an email, right? It can get buried under other notifications, other alerts, other things that are important to that individual, but also to it, it limits our reach, right? Your, your emails are limited to who you can send the actual email to. And that might be uh, distribution based, right? So do you have access to distribution list in your organizations that are wide enough to get the right reach and so forth and so on? And then how do we get further engagement? on those products that we've created and, and those requirements that address those requirements. And a lot of that is relationship built and in, uh, built into our relationships. And if you're a really mature program, all those relationships are built into the pipeline. Right? You create something, uh, you send it down the pipeline to your operators and there's someone to pick it up and action it right away and no questions asked. But when you first get off the ground, like you really have to develop those relationships. You really have to show the value up front on what this Intel can do for you. And that's tough in the inbox, right? And third, there's, there's a lot of, um, it, it's hard to get to your historical uh, products that you've already sent out and already developed, right? All the products that you've disseminated in the past. And that history becomes what? History, right? So minimal access to historical products, what it does is create constraints on your analysts because if your stakeholder don't know where to go to find your intelligence, they're gonna ask you again, right? They may ask you the same question you just addressed in your product you just sent out yesterday, right? And that's kind of how it is when you're working through your dissemination challenges. Now, the second part of that is the requirements issue, right? Now you have to actually make it real for your stakeholders. You have these requirements, you develop it, you know, you have this, uh, these requirements in place. How do you track it back to these products, right? And you really have to think about the traceability, right? And in the beginning, when you're first getting started, like a lot of that traceability is very manual. It's a manual process. And you have to connect those requirements to how you're delivering against those requirements to make it real for those stakeholders who are along this ride with you. And, uh, and that's gonna create more awareness for the stakeholder. They kind of get it. They, they can give you more feedback if they understand how they're being delivered against, right? Or how these requirements are being delivered against. And that lack of clarity uh, and is going to lead to more confusion for your stakeholder. And Bob put it uh, nicely with the, with the handholding, right? Now you have to re-educate your stakeholder every time, right? Every time you come towards a review. You got to re-educate them. You kind of got to teach them up how, how, why are we doing this? Why is this important? Why can this help you? Uh, but if they're engaged from the beginning and they have that clarity that, that uh, it's less opaque to them, it's easy for them to kind of get it up front. And then metrics are very difficult to derive when you don't have a good system in place to manage your requirements. And metrics, again, is how we, we track our performance against these requirements. Is it not enough to just have a list of requirements? You have to address them. And then you also have to track how you perform against them, right? Are they valuable to even have them in the first place? So that's all part of it. So what do we do now? We know the challenges. How do we innovate through? How do we get towards the other side? So I'll do this in a couple of ways. One, I want to give something to you. And I know we're kind of tough on time, but I want to give something to you. You can start tomorrow. And then we'll talk about what the future would look like and how, if you build the systems right, you can develop towards something even grander. So how do we move from inbox intelligence to something that's more interactive, more tangible, more things, uh, make it easier for, for stakeholders to get around? And really what we want to do is centralize and connect that intelligence, make it easy for people to see that alignment. How do you pivot from the requirement to how you address the requirement? Is it a product that matches it, right? How do you get that clear as day, right? And once you know the stakeholders are able to understand that alignment, it makes it a whole lot easier to understand where the products are being delivered or how much value you're giving them. Second, let's revisit that dissemination strategy or a problem that we talked about. Let's look back at how we're actually communicating with our stakeholders, right? Do we need to add a little more polish? Do we need to lean into other channels of dissemination? No. And Bob talked a lot about the different products that you may produce and they have different audiences. And each one of those products may have its own type of dissemination channel, right? 
um, let's say it's, it's an executive uh, level, right? You have your leadership stakeholders. So maybe a text message is right. That's the product. And you send it through a text message and that's the dissemination channel. But your operators, they need you know quick reports, tactical, throw some ILCs on a piece of paper, tell them where the things are and they point, right? And you can send it right to uh, Slack. They're Slack users. Or maybe you have big, beautiful reports that are the history of, you know, and it's in a very analytical and it looks back of everything and the trends that we're seeing as Capital One or in your organization. And we want to put that somewhere, hang it up somewhere, and so that it's easy to accessible on our internal web, or you know, maybe you have internal tools that you use, internal blog sites, and so forth. You know, that's another dissemination strategy. So really think creatively, think outside the box. How can you get more eyes on your intelligence, or eyes on your eyes? I guess is a good way to put it, right? And then design more towards interactive systems. So I'll, I'll get to how do we get interactive, and, and I'm gonna you know peel back a layer here and dive a little deeper. So this is a real system and this is kind of dummy data, dummy thing that I put together for the purpose of this talk. And this could be its own talk by itself on how to really action this. But from high level, you can create, use Google Sheets, use the tools that you have, right? So let's say your tool is Google Sheets and I'm using that as an example because it's free. So you can go in here and, and use your, um, your, your sheets and create kind of different tabs to store your stuff and centralize your products. Have everything live in one place, have your products live in one tab, and have multiple tabs to keep your tags in there so that you can reference them to your products, right? Have that alignment. And then from there, you can have a, a third tab that'll have your dashboarding and your metrics and visualizations up there. And uh, you know, just cause again, time, I'm gonna move on to the next part of it, but this is a system that you can talk about and I'll, and I'll address a lot of this in the hallway if you want to learn more. So we started there, we started uh, Scrappy, right? And then we got into a full custom solution, right? And we built upon that, we built on those systems and what we got was Codename Atlas, right? And now we're centralizing all this in a portal. You're able to access and self-service, get your needs met all on a portal. And that's just the interactive UI version of what we built in the tools that we, you know, you may have at home, right? Your Google Sheets or whatever the whatever the case may be. And um, how do we make our interactive, our requirements more interactive, right? How do you make it easy for, for stakeholders to get it? We allow them to submit our requirements, right? We allow them to submit even requests through the portal. So now it's always available to them so they can just fire off a request to us. And then that also kicks off our workflow and automates that for us. Now, we wanna make it very intuitive and easy to navigate through all those requirements that we have, right? So we have it all in one place and you're able to click into that requirement and see some details, see the history behind those requirements, all in, that, in, in the portal. And then our products, our products are, are we wanna give a central home. We talked about a product list in a sheet before. Now this is like the real grand version of it. Uh, it's in one place and you can filter down, search against it, look at your requirements. So if you're a stakeholder and I care about requirement 1.1, you click it and now you have all the products that align to that. Now you know how we provide value to you easily. And then um, in the products itself, we have real connections, right? Real integrations, the requirements, the tags, they're all there, right? The feedback is intuitive. It looks just like everything else that you, you give feedback for. So we get that more in real time. And then um, versions, you're able to download the different version types right from uh, the tool, right? And this is just, again, iterations on what you can build at home uh, and just having steady working requirements in your previous system. Uh, events, we monitor events in the tool, right? And we're able to track our events to products that create that address those, uh, those events and then requirements that are addressed by those products. So you have that traceability all the way from the event that occurred all the way to the product and then how it satisfies that requirement so the stakeholders can really get it and also the visibility and the workflow benefits that come from this and again the slides will be available um, and this is the last slide so I'll leave it at this uh, if you do it all this way you have better ways to visualize and report efficiently right you have maybe you have a mobile view maybe you have leadership views that can get some insight from very quickly and then you can also tailor to audit and, and get reporting done more efficiently and of course your production metrics and how you perform so I know that was really rapid fire but Thanks again, and, uh, and I hope I, I lived you with something uh, there.